Did you know Skyward was originally going to be in the Cosmere? The nowhere makes a lot more sense now, huh? What shard? Hey internet, I'm Steve and this is Raffo. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you may have figured out that I really like the Cosmere. Literally my username. However, I'm not just here for the stories Hoyd randomly shows up in, but I've got theories about that. Different video. I want to read everything that Brandon has written. I'm coming for you, Memory of Light. Eventually. And with this month's Year of Sanderson swag box theme, it's time to talk about his latest venture into sci-fi and young adult fiction, the Skyward series. Now you may think, young adult? I don't read kid books. Chill out, Grimdark. These novels take place in the far future, in a galaxy far, far away, where humanity has been hunted to near extinction. One of, if not the last holdout of humankind, are the descendants of the crew of the Defiant, which crash landed on the planet of Detritus 75 years ago. This planet is surrounded by a series of autonomous orbital platforms, which have enabled the inhabitants to withstand the alien force attempting to eradicate them. Life goes on in protected caverns underground, and the Defiant Defense Force, using technology and schematics from their original fleet, as well as what's found on world, are able to manufacture starfighters in order to fight against the Krell. No, not those. Not those either. Nothing like those. Goodness, why are there so many aliens named Krell? The main character on this desolate world is a teenage girl named Spensa, daughter of a disgraced pilot who dreams of nothing more than to pilot a starfighter. That and laughing over the smoldering remains of her enemies as their charred and broken corpses slowly molder away into oblivion. She's kind of weird. Brandon described it as how to train your dragon, but instead it's a girl who finds a spaceship and goes to Top Gun school. This series is incredible. It's got everything you'd expect from a Sanderson novel, compelling characters, laugh out loud dialogue, spectacular world building, solid narrative twists, specialized in-universe swear words, only this time it's 400 pages instead of a thousand. And it's in space! Seriously though, there are moments in these books that I firmly believe if everyone on Earth read and understood them, the world would change. War, prejudice, discrimination, gone. Starsight Chapter 28, man. If that's not trying too hard to sell you on these, I don't know what is. You can fit so much social commentary in this bad boy. There are between four and seven books in this series, depending on how you count. Sometimes math is hard. The three main novels so far, Skyward, Starsight, and Cytonic, with the fourth and final novel, Defiant, coming this November. Between Starsight and Cytonic, Brandon teamed up with author Jancy Patterson, author of a lot, actually, to write three novellas focusing on other members of Spence's flight group. Sunreach, Redon, and Evershore were then published together in the Skyward Flight hardcover in 2022. And this whole universe was originally kicked off in 2009, when Brandon published the short story Defending Elysium on his website, which is basically a prequel, but like a hundreds of years pre-prequel. If you want to get into it, which you do, I recommend approaching them this way. Start with Skyward. You get to know Spensa, you get to know Mbot, and you get a basic introduction to the magic system. Yeah, it's sci-fi, but it's also Sanderson. Of course there's a magic system of some kind. The next book is Starsight, a much larger view of the universe with significantly more info on the other beings that are out there. Starsight ends on quite the cliffhanger, but I suggest going to Sunreach first. So now it gets weird. The Skyward Flight novellas, starting with Sunreach, happen at the same time as Cytonic. In fact, the interludes of Cytonic connect us directly with what's going on with the rest of the flight, to the point that they're basically just one big novel to me anyway. Once you finish Sunreach, start Cytonic, going back to literally the moment after Starsight ended. You're going to leapfrog with time a bit here, jumping well ahead of Cytonic, then letting Cytonic get well ahead of the novellas. Read Cytonic until you finish part one, including the first interlude. Boom, you're caught up to each other. Now move on to Redon. Finish Read On and go back to Cytonic with part two. Part of me was really tempted to split up Evershore chapter by chapter, but neither of us really wants me to do that. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Read Cytonic, part three, part four, part five, but do not read the epilogue. Before I'll allow that, pick up Evershore and go through it. Once that's done, finally go back to Cytonic and read the final chapter. But are we done? No we are not! It's time to travel back either 15 years or centuries. 
Time gets weird when cytonics are involved. And read the prequel, Defending Elysium, linked in the description, details humanity's first encounters with aliens and the wider universe. Now that you've seen more of what they can do, this will make a lot more sense. Plus, you might recognize a few things from the book you just finished. It is Sanderson, after all. Thank you for watching! As always, huge thank you to my patrons, without whom I wouldn't be recording on this fancy new microphone. My unboxing of Tress, opening the Cytoverse box, and my next Cosmere Connections video, all coming this month, get to be seen early by them. And you too, if you sign up! Depending on what tier you choose, your impact can significantly matter. That was bad. And I'm not a sorry. Thanks, Matt and Doug. If you haven't read the Skyward series yet, get on it. There's more on the way. With this last book, Defiant, coming this Dragonsteel Con. And a sequel trilogy headed by Jancy Patterson called Skyward Legacy coming after that. Seriously, read and find out!